What's up YouTube? Today I'm excited to bring you a brand new video all about Docker management. Now we all have been doing Docker management mainly either through TrueNOS, especially through the apps catalog here, which you'll see all these apps listed right here, or Dockage. And Dockage has been the one that I've been using the most with you guys because I think it's the simplest for new people. So if you're pretty good with dockage and you're getting pretty comfortable here or maybe you're just like hey i want to go with something just a little bit more developed uh today's video is going to be all about portainer portainer is another docker management system that's been around much longer than dockage it actually has a professional version that is paid for today we're going to be looking at the non-paid the free edition uh, which is very very powerful and i think an extremely good docker management system and we're going to install it on TrueNAS a community edition this is the fangtooth rc that's you see here, and we're gonna get up and running and I'm gonna deploy a stack and show you guys how it can work. So let's go and start by going to our data sets like usual, we're gonna go into our configs and we're gonna create a new data set here and this is gonna be called Portainer. Now Portainer is a little bit different in that it runs as root, it does not run as 568. So the data preset we're gonna use is gonna be generic. We're gonna turn to pool list here. So you'll see Portainer here is just running as root and root has read, write and execute permissions. And that's fine because that's what Portainer is gonna run as. So let's come over here to our apps. Let's discover apps and then let's search for Portainer. This is Portainer from the community edition. So you'll see some screenshots and stuff here. And we are going to install this Portainer Community Edition, and again, you have the Enterprise Edition. If you use the Enterprise Edition, just know that that costs money. The, the network port here, it by default, usually runs on 9443, so that's what we're going to use. Okay, the data for Portainer Data Storage is going to be the host path we just created in configs Portainer, like that. And we are done. Let's install. Okay, Portainer is now up and running on 9443. So I'm just going to check the logs really quickly, make sure everything looks okay. And it does look okay. So let's come over here and hit this, and then hit my web UI, and then hit accept risk. And now you'll notice that Portainer runs on HTTPS. So if you go ahead and try and type HTTP and then your IP address and then the port number here, it is not going to work. So now we're gonna have to create a password. The trick is that I have to create a password that's pretty strong because it must be at least 12 characters. So I can't just use my normal password. So I'm gonna go ahead and off the screen, just go to my generator and I'm gonna generate a secure password. I'm gonna copy it here and I'm gonna paste it in here and I'm gonna uncheck this box and I'm gonna click create user. There we go. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and click get started and now I'm in my local environment. So this is gonna be the path you're gonna take just to get same clicks, just to get right to the beginning of the Portainer interface. I'm gonna walk you guys around a little bit. So unfortunately, just like if you're using Dockage versus TrueNAS versus Portainer, whatever you've made in a different container management system uh, is not gonna be able to be managed by Portainer. So for example, let's look at our stacks here. You'll see here it says limited. The stack was created outside of Portainer control over the stack is limited. Same with containers. Um, we have some, I uh, actually have a lot of things running right now because on my TrueNAS, so you'll see here in my apps, just about everything is stopped. But anyway, no matter, it doesn't even if I started all these things, you cannot control the TrueNAS apps or the Dockage apps through Portainer. Portainer can only manage what's built inside of Portainer, but I can do some things. Like for example, when I come over here to Dockage, I can stop uh, or restart or pause or remove uh, this container here even though it was not created with Portainer. So let's come back out to the dashboard. There's gonna be three or four spots on this left here that I'm gonna walk you through. So the dashboard's gonna show you just the overview of what's going on here. Um, one of the most convenient parts about this is you can see our images here. Now you'll notice here, all these images are listed as unused. Now they're listed as unused because I've got some stuff stopped and some stuff deleted. So let's come back over here and let's go to all, there we go. So all these unused, um, Images are saying that, hey, there's nothing even paused right now that's using this. So if you see any unused images and you know you those are good containers, that's fine. But I can remove the images right from here for containers that I may have deleted, but the images lag behind and just keep taking up hard drive space. This is the list of my containers. So if I had a bunch of things running right now, you would see all my containers listed here. This is very convenient because you see the state. You can These little button right here will show you logs, for example. And here's all my logs from Dockage. Over here, we can see little inspect things. This will show you a little bit about the way that the container is deployed right now. We can shell directly into the container from here like that, which is really cool. Check that out. And then we can come over here, and this is an attachment, attach console. And then we just come to the console here. 
we're going to detach that because it's not going to do anything because that container doesn't have one. So here we can see that the st what stack it was launched by, the image that it's using, when it was created, the internal IP address, and the port that it is published on. So this is just a, quite a bit of information. Uh, it does pretty well like that. Uh, you can see here volumes. These are the Docker volumes that exist right now for all of the Docker containers I've created. This is where it stores this persistent information. I have, have mounted uh, volumes to my containers. Networks is really convenient. I actually like the Networks tab of Portainer better than anything. The reason for that is it works. Uh, the, the networks in Dockage do not work the way I think they should, and they're kind of broken the way that it, it just, it, I just don't like the way the networks work. I think the networks in Portainer are far better, and I'll show you an example of that. First, let's go into Dockage actually and just start the R stack. There we go. So all these containers should be up right now. That's good. Let's come back to dashboard and containers. And you'll see now I've got a bunch more stuff here. Let's show all. There we go. So for example, the reason I like this is because if I come to Sonar, for example, this is going to show me what is in the Sonar container that's running, running for a few seconds. Uh-huh. Shows me all the containers. This is 89, 89. This is where it's running. We can see the GIDs and PIDs to make sure I know it's running as apps all kinds of information here that you're probably never going to look at this is pretty cool you know you can adjust the restart policy right from a drop down i always have everything to unless stop but if that's not for you that's cool these are the volumes that i mounted so this is the config volume for example mount tank stacks my configs directory my media directory and where it's mounted to both outside the container and inside the container really cool this is the section that i like the most connected network so you'll see the r stack default is where it is connected but i could add a network right here for example so if there's another network that i want to add i can just click it like for example the dockage network and i can click join network and just like that my container i'm going to scroll all the way down is now on two different networks that's really cool how about what's going on in the r stack default this is what's in the r stack network look at all these containers so it's really cool because I can kick a container off this network if I wanted to. I don't want to. But if I did, uh, I can do that. Or if maybe I created another network that I want to join these containers to, that's great. What about what about a Cloudflare tunnel? If I want to use Cloudflare tunnels and I want to refer to the container by the container name instead of the IP, I can put the tunnel in this network instead of moving all the other uh, containers. It's probably easier just to add the tunnel to this network and be done. So this, I think the Networks tab is probably one of my favorite parts of this. But the Stacks tab is going to be where you're going to spend most of your time. So when we do a stack here, this is going to be how we do our Docker Compose. So if I come over here to the wiki, for example, okay, and I come over here and I just find any stack going on. Let's look at Plex, for example. Very common. This is the Docker Compose stack for Plex. I can just come over here and copy this and then come back to my portainer and I'm going to add stack. And here I'm going to call this Plex. This is where my stack name is going to be listed. I'm going to come down here and paste my YAML file. And this is everything that's down here. I'm just going to leave it just like that, except for the fact that I'm going to change this because I don't have any of these directories created as far as I remember. Oh, actually, I think I might, but I don't want to use them. And that's good actually for my media folder. Okay, if you wanted to add environment variables or load and variables for a file, you can click this and you can upload the environments variable files that you have, or you can just do an environment variable one line at a time. Really cool, pretty much similar to Dockage. I'm gonna leave it to that. Um, I'm gonna remove this so I can deploy the stack. So now my deploy stack button is blue. I'm gonna click deploy and it has now deployed Plex. So let's come back over here to my containers. And here's Plex, Plex is starting up. We can go ahead and look at the logs. And we can see it's starting and doing all of its thing. Let's come back to containers. And Plex should be up and running here. And these are all the ports that it's up and running on. And you can see we published a bunch of ports. Um, I forget what port it runs stock. I think it's 32400. And of course, here's the issue. When I click, it doesn't actually take me to it. So I have to go and edit this here. There we go. So here's Plex up and running. And it pulled some of my information before, but there, there you go. So that's that's pretty much a really easy way just to deploy Docker Compose files. And now because I manage this through Portainer, I have a lot more control. So I can see stacks here. Control is listed as total. So I can make tons of changes here to Plex. This is where Plex is. You can see the ports and you can see all these things. I have the option to migrate or duplicate, delete, stop. There's all kinds of cool things here. So let's start by stopping the stack. I do want to stop it. Cool. It's stopping my stack. Now you can see this little blue bar across the top. This is the 
loading bar pretty much tell me what it's doing. So I'm going to come back out to stacks right here. And you can see Plex is listed as inactive because it has stopped. I can come back out to my stacks or my containers. And here, where are you? Plex is not listed because I don't believe it's running. And that's because now it's stopped. It's not listed as a container anymore. So let's come back out to my stacks. And I'm going to delete this stack, remove just like that. Yes, I do want to remove that stack. And it is done. The images are still here. Um, and you can see now a bunch more of my images are now used because I have started a lot more of my apps. And my volumes will also should show more use, but some of this looks like stuff I probably used for testing videos before for YouTube and have since removed. So that's pretty cool. So this is a pretty just quick, good overview of what it's like to use the dashboard and what it's like to use some of these for Portainer. This is not a very hard thing to use. If you're just basically doing Docker Compose, you're gonna spend most of your time in containers and stacks. You really don't ever have to touch images or networks or volumes if you don't want. This is just pretty much just for managing stuff and managing data on the host. You can get by with doing nothing more than deploying stacks from here and then messing with your containers from here. It's that simple. So it's not a super difficult uh, interface. I think it's a lot busier, which again, when I look at something like Dockage, Dockage is just a little bit more simple in my opinion in terms of what it's showing you. Um, I also like the way they put this all on one screen. So for example, I can see my compose file at the same time that I see all my containers at the same time I can, can see my terminal. On Portainer, I have to be able to click into those things to see all of them at the same time. So I kind of like the view that Dockage gives me. It's my personal choice, not because it's the more powerful of the two. It's not. It's actually less powerful, but because of the way that it displays the data to me, I just personally like it. But there is nothing wrong with Portainer. And in fact, I run both. And the reason I run both is for the networks tab, because in Dockage, the network section down here, uh -huh. come back up, let's edit the stack. When I come over here, the network section is not really great. Um, in fact, I don't like this network section at all. I don't like the way this does what it does. I also, I like the .env a little bit, but I kind of like sometimes in Portainer. For some containers, they'll let you download a .env. Uh, if that's the case, for a container in Dockage, I would then have to copy that env file out or manually paste it into the directory of the stacks. For Portainer, I can just do a straight upload for stacks. Uh, when I do it, add a stack, I have the option to just deploy, uh, add it right here in my in, from a file. So I think that's pretty cool. But this has just been a really quick overview. I hope you guys really liked it. I hope you guys get to play with both, install both, play with both of these things. They're pretty amazing. Uh, just get used to using them. And the more containers you get good at, the better and more fun this is going to be. If you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you really want to support me, please buy me a coffee.